Welcome to Friday Front Room Flows. I'm Trina Robinson. Give me a small dose of positivity and motivation to get your weekend started. Enjoy. In keeping with the Poetry Is series, tonight's episode will be centered around poetry is freedom. One of the most important freedoms is freedom of speech. There is power in the pen that feeds the voice. Poetry, like other artistic forms of expression, can be used to reflect the world the poet sees. The image, painted with words, gets the audience's attention and depending on the intention, can spread a message, shed light, or create a call to action on a situation. See if you can recognize the messages I wanted to convey in tonight's poems. You ever watch water go down the drain? Just look as it spirals back to wherever water goes. Rivers, the ocean, or big box stores ready to be bottled and sold. Nobody cares because it's water. But what if there's something in the water? Something you don't like. Something you're not content with having float along with what you claim is innocent. That can clog a drain if we let it. That can drown a life if we let it. That can contaminate all that we created as right if we let it. That can't happen. We won't let it. Some of you will use a strainer to restrain that which you see as a stain on what you claim is pure. Some get physically violent, reaching out your hand to stop this you call pollutant. Then there's the smart ones of you that simply let it be. Those who realize it's all water, innately wanting to run free. The purpose is not to hurt you. When will you let that fully sink through? I woke up with no voice today, but at least I can still breathe. It's hard to get the imagery of murder out of my memory. I've cried out, screaming at my phone and TV screen, my frustrations, my rage, my vengeance, until my soul ached from the events that took place. My body went to sleep, but my mind still weeped. I woke up with no voice today, but at least I can still breathe, still rise to my feet, still carry on a legacy, still fight for what I believe. I woke up with no voice today, but at least I can still breathe. We know how to handle tornadoes, snowstorms, floods, and earthquakes. We gather supplies, go to our safe space, hunker down and wait. When they pass through and clear skies return, we assess the damage. Thank God we were spared. Go on living and hope that the better outcome repeats. But what about winds of racial injustice? Crippling cold blizzards of economic oppression, flood waters deep with systemic educational and political dismantling. See, not only are we standing in a natural storm's eye, we have to watch out for wolves in police clothes. CEOs with their hand on the power switch determining whether we live or die, and these elected officials jumping ship instead of putting the people's mind at ease because they can't stand not having heat. All while this ill-managed pandemic chopping down whole generations like forest trees. We don't give warnings for these emergencies. Only the aftermath is shown on TV, disguised in the cloak of night or unashamed in broad daylight. How do we weather man-made storms that weigh heavy on our psyche, forcing us to be comfortable with this new reality? What type of bunker can protect us from ignorance? What innermost area of our home will make us rich? I'll be the first to admit, I can't be social and distant. I know I have to consider the rest of society, even if a portion of society wouldn't want to see people like me breathe or simply just be. But I'm wearing my mask and staying away six feet, wishing for a return to normalcy, but still thanking God for protecting me and praying that repeats. 